the worst types of Airbnb guests. In this video, I'm going to be explaining who they are, what they do, and what makes them the worst types of guests, and how you can actually go about avoiding them as well. And trust me, you're going to want to know this information, especially if you're getting started off, because if you come across these people, it will give you massive, massive headaches. But look, if you take value from this video, hit the thumbs up. If you're looking to learn more about Airbnb service combination property, hit that subscribe button as well. But let's get right into it. Now, one of the main risks that you're going to face when you actually have an Airbnb or service combination property is guests actually coming in and throwing parties. Hey, you know, sometimes guests may use certain cold words, like for example, oh, I just want to bring my friends over to have a gathering, just a little small gathering or have some friends over. Trust me, I've heard these things before and I'm getting calls from our neighbors talking, talking about, oh my gosh, there's like 20, 30 people in your property. So that's one thing you want to keep in mind as well in terms of certain key words that they use when they're actually letting you know who they want to bring in the property. So make sure first and foremost, when they're saying that, you're asking them first, how many people are actually going to be staying in there? But look, at the same time, a lot of these people, they can just simply lie to you. I've had that happen to me before to where, you know, I have guests booking a two bedroom apartment and saying, hey, you know, it's just for me and a friend and they've gone there and they've brought like 15 other people. And I've had certain instances to where I've had a guest book the property for three nights and then literally the whole three days, they'll literally pine it up, popping balloons, smoking weed, drinking, doing all these different things. By the time I realized and actually came there to see what was going on, they've taken my TV, they've taken the PlayStation, they've taken some really nice pictures on the wall. It took quite a lot of things to be fair. And when that actually happened, I was actually super early on in my journey. So I couldn't take the right precautions needed to allow me to obviously not take a hit and not take a loss from that particular booking that, you know, I received. So look, there's a few different things that you can go about doing to protect yourself when it comes to getting these types of guests that want to book your properties to throw parties. First and foremost, you actually want to be taking them through screening or referencing just to double check that they're actually okay and they're actually legit. And obviously this involves you getting a copy of their ID. So you obviously you know who they are, getting a copy or getting them to sign your terms and conditions, making sure that they're adhering to the rules of the properties and making sure you're stating in those terms and conditions that if they're caught smoking, throwing a party for whatever reason, they'll be fine and they'll be fined very heavily. And look, you can even go as far as saying if you are caught throwing parties for whatever reason, then we will find you £2,000, no questions asked. And you actually you can actually put that in the terms and conditions. Now, mind you, if you have someone that has that intention of trying to book your property, you've collected a holding deposit from them, which you definitely need to do as well. You've collected their ID, so you know who they are. And now they've seen the terms and conditions and they're reading for it and they see that part. Now they're going to think twice about trying to take the piss and actually trying to book your property. I've had it happen before to where we've sent guests terms and conditions to sign. They didn't sign it for whatever reason. Obviously, they didn't tell me why, but I suspected certain things anyways. And because of that, that booking wasn't finalized and that booking was just removed. And make sure you're doing the same thing as well when you actually have a property. If you have a property and you're sending out terms and conditions to guests and they're not signing it and they're not, and they're not giving you a valid reason why, to be fair, there is no valid reason. It's, it's either you sign it or you don't sign it and you don't book the property. It's simple. So those are just a few things that you can go about doing as well. Also, just another tip for you. What you could do, you could include a ring doorbell camera on the door just so you're actually able to see how many people are actually coming in the property. So for example, if the guests are booking your property, they're saying it's for two people, but then when you're checking the ring doorbell camera, you're seeing like 15 or 20 people coming in, then you know what time it is with regards to what's going on in that property. And on top of that, what you could do as well, you can install something called a minute noise sensor. Now, what a minute noise sensor is, is pretty much what's well, in the title. It's a noise sensor. You can place it in the living room or you can place it in all rooms in the property itself. And when the noise reaches above a certain level, you will be notified through your phone app. If you have the right subscription for that as well, you can even alert a security team or local security team in the area. And then they can go to the property on your behalf and completely shut it down and kick everyone out as well. And by the way, also I want to let you know that when it comes to the different ways of you going about minimizing the risk of actually attracting bad guests, the systems you need to include to allow you to obviously minimize the risk of that as well. I've actually got a free PDF for you in the description box. If you download that, you'll get free access to that, no problem whatsoever. And also another little side note that may help you out as well. This is an absolute must, but it's definitely a good thing for you to do if you can. Let's say for example, you're on friendly terms with your neighbors. You've made friends with the neighbors there, you've got to know them a little bit. You're telling them what you're, you're actually doing in that property. You know, they're happy with it. And if something is a little bit off with that property and you get certain guests coming in there and doing certain things they shouldn't be doing and the neighbor neighbors notice that or because you're on friendly terms with them they can give you the heads up letting you know hey you know this person's staying in there they're doing this and that and you should know about it and obviously that will allow you to get on top of the problem a lot quicker and actually remove the problem completely because you was notified by your neighbor so just making sure you're getting on friendly terms with your neighbors if possible now look i'm not saying that that's going to be the case for all neighbors some people just don't want to speak to you or they're just antisocial, whatever the case may be that's fine but you know if you're taking on a property and you're in the process of setting it up just even knocking on the neighbor's door to maybe just introducing yourself letting them know look hey uh, my name is so and so and i'm just next door on this property this is what i'm doing what's your name etc etc and just really just breaking the ice with them and just getting to know them and just really building that relationship with them it's a small thing but it can definitely help out in a lot of these situations i've had it with my properties before to where a neighbor has called me when something has gone wrong or when something has gone off for example one time i had my neighbor calling me because he saw a lot of people going in and out of my property and i come to realize that it was actually an escort that booked that property and the people that were coming in and out were obviously her clients that were looking to do their thing obviously and of course my neighbor gave me
me the heads up about that. I was able to get on top of it. And obviously I was able to, you know, get her removed because, you know, she couldn't be doing that. And also one thing that's worth bearing in mind too, depending on what your minimum nightly stay is. So let's say for example, if someone wanted to book your property, they couldn't book it for a minimum of two nights or three nights. If they wanted to book it, they have to book it for at least two or three nights. They can't book it for one night. However, let's say for example, you're allowing your property to be booked for one night. If someone's looking for a one night stay, they can book your property. Then, you know, the chances of people actually attending your property to throw parties will be a lot higher because you don't really have that many people, you know, looking to throw parties over the next few days. It's possible. It's happened to me to be fair. I'm not gonna lie to you, but you don't have, it's not really that often. It's a lot more, you know, common with properties that do allow one night stays. Now look, that's not to say that you shouldn't accept one night stays. If you're taking the right precautions with doing some of the things I mentioned earlier on, you can definitely go about making it happen. And to be fair, even with one night stays, you can actually charge a premium as well because um, a lot of people out there don't allow one night stays. It's only some people, which obviously you can take advantage of as well. But at the same time, just know that it's a higher risk of attracting those sorts of people. So just make sure you're taking extra precaution if you're allowing one night stays as well. So those are a few things that you need to know that will allow you to minimize the risk of coming across one of the worst types of guests there are, which is obviously those that are booking your property to throw parties. But there is another one. This isn't the only worst type for guests there is. In fact, in my opinion, this one's actually way, way worse because they actually come in there with the intention of actually scamming you out of your money. Let me explain a little bit. Let's say for example, you actually get a guest, you know, they're booking your property. They book your property, no problems whatsoever. They stay there, no issues. They're not letting you know anything's wrong or whatever the case may be. But then when they check out and they actually leave, they send you a bucket loads of list of problems that they encountered and they experienced as they were staying in the property. Oh, the Wi-Fi wasn't working. Oh, I couldn't get the heating to work properly. Oh, the place was dirty, it wasn't clean. Or oh, this wasn't working, that wasn't working, etc., etc., etc. Now look, the reason why that they're gonna do that to you is so that they can blackmail you into them not paying for their stay or them getting a compensation in exchange for them not leaving you a bad review on Airbnb or booking.com. And it works. A lot of people obviously don't wanna be receiving bad reviews. It affects your business quite a lot. If you get bad reviews, you'll get less people actually wanting to book your property, et cetera, et cetera. By the same time, we can't be letting these people win in terms of, you know, them coming to book our properties and trying to scam us and us being submissive to it. Like, no, nah, can't do that. So look, there's a few different things that you can go about doing to protect yourself in those types of situations. Let's say, for example, you get a guest staying there and they're trying to say, oh, the TV was broken when I got there or, oh, the dining room chairs were broken or the bed was torn or whatever the case may be. And sometimes it could even be them actually damaging the property themselves, but they're trying to say that it was already like that. So what you can do now, you can get an app called Properly. Now, Properly is a property management app and also a cleaning management app tool as well. There's a certain function in this app that will allow you to take real time photos that actually have timestamps and date stamps on them as well. And if you actually get a guest trying to say, oh yeah, we booked the property, but then, you know, when we booked it, the TV was broken or this was broken or this wasn't working, whatever the case may be. Well, you know, you've got proof that, you know, prior to them actually checking in, the cleaners, you know, when they went there, they took pictures of everything. Everything was working as normal. They tested everything and they actually took pictures of it. And these pictures are timestamped. So it shows you that these were actually taken on your check-in day. They don't really have any legs to stand on. But in certain situations to where you do have guests experiencing certain difficulties, but they just don't say anything during their stay, because I have had that happen to me before to where genuinely you had guests that didn't say anything, but they were experiencing some difficulties. And then throughout their stay, or sorry, at the end of the stay, they're saying, look, this wasn't working, that wasn't working. I come to realize that, okay, that actually wasn't working. What you could do is just check in with them throughout their stay. If you're messaging them on their first night, their second night, and just throughout their stay, just to make sure everything's okay, everything's comfortable with them, there's no issues whatsoever, then you're being extra sure you're taking the right precautions to allow you to make sure that you're checking in with the guests and you're obviously making sure that they're having the best possible stay possible. And also, this is just a bonus for you when it comes to the worst types of guests there are, but these are actually people committing fraud by using stolen credit card information to actually book your property. Now, when that happens, just so you understand, if someone actually does that to your property and you allow it because you're not able to spot it, then once the bank actually contacts you, you have to then return that money back. And if the guests have stayed there already, I mean, you've just taken a loss. So what you can do in that scenario to make sure that you're obviously minimizing the risk of that happening, first and foremost, you're collecting their ID. I already mentioned that before, but also you're getting them to actually show you a picture of their bank card itself. Now look, they can cover certain parts or whatever the case may be. The main thing for you that you want to see is their names. And obviously some of the numbers that actually match up to the card that they used to pay as they were making that booking. And also at the same time as well, you want to make sure that you're checking their billing address as well, or the postcode of the card that's actually registered to as well. Because look, if you actually get someone that books with someone else's credit card information, and they take a picture, they can really and truly just Photoshop the name and put their own name. And then obviously the rest of the card deals are the same, but they will not know in most cases what the address of the card holder is. You can actually test this as well. If you have a Stripe account, which you definitely should have, by the way, if you've got an Airbnb property, you can go on your Stripe and then you can type in the card details along with the postcode that they actually give you. And if it doesn't match up, then something's iffy and let them know about it. And if they can't really pass any of those checks, then you just cancel the booking. So look, 
just a little quick tip there for you. But look, I just wanted to share some of this information to you relating to Airbnb and service accommodation guests, the worst types of them, and how you can go about minimizing the risk on your part of actually encountering them in the first place as well. So I hope you took massive value from this video. If you have, really appreciate it. Hit that like button so that YouTube can push this out to more people. Also, if you're looking to learn more about Airbnb, service accommodation, property, this is a channel to be at, putting content out there on a weekly basis. So make sure you're hitting that subscribe button as well. But look, without further ado, I'll let you go. I'll let you do your thing and I'm going to catch you in the next video. Oh. Oh, 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 oh,